Good afternoon. I am Lauren Clementino, librarian and at the Flagstaff City Coconino County Public Library and a member of the Arizona Library Association Professional Development Committee. I will be your moderator for today's webinar. The AZLA Professional Development Committee provides enhanced professional development opportunities for members to increase the knowledge, skills, and abilities of library and information professionals across the state of Arizona. Before we get started, please note a few housekeeping details. Webinar participants are in listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for Q&A at the end of the presentation please submit questions via the chat at the bottom of your screen. If you are attending on a desktop computer or at the top of your screen, if you are attending from a mobile device, this session is being recorded and the recording will be made available on the Arizona Library Association YouTube channel. A link will be provided in your follow-up email. Patricia, sorry, Patricia Jimenez will be your technical director today. If you have any technical issues during the webinar, you can contact her via the chat. If you are unable to hear sound during the webinar, you may dial in using the phone number and access code provided in your registration confirmation email. At the end of the webinar, we ask that you complete a simple four question evaluation survey. The estimated time to complete the survey is two to three minutes. Please take the time to complete it as we use the data to improve our offerings to you and your feedback is important to us. The Arizona Library Association wishes to acknowledge the native nations that have inhabited Arizona lands for centuries. We honor the people of these nations on whose ancestral homelands and resources AZLA member libraries were built. By offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous sovereignty and will work to hold Arizona Library Association members accountable to the information needs of American Indian and Indigenous peoples. I'd like to encourage library staff of all levels to consider becoming an Arizona Library Association member. Among other things, your membership enables AZLA to provide professional development opportunities to library staff across Arizona. Visit www.azla.org for additional information. Please support AZLA. When you add our, our organization as your designated charity and purchase through the Amazon Smile portal, Amazon will donate 5% of your eligible purchases made to the Arizona Library Association. The AZLA Professional Development webinars reach librarians and library professionals in Arizona and throughout the USA. Do you know a business or organization who would benefit from direct access to library professionals? Contact us at development at azla.org for sponsorship levels and rates. The Professional Development Committee wants you. If you have expertise in library science, that you think would help other libraries and librarians, please consider applying to be a webinar presenter. You, find, you will find a link in your webinar follow-up email. I want to invite you to the next program in our monthly webinar series, brought to you by the AZLA Professional Development Committee. On October 14th, 2021, join us for turning to do into Tada. Prioritizing and Organizing at Work with Karina Tuller and Brandy Helawa. Do you have so much to do in so little time? Is your idea of a good time making a to-do list and checking it off? Are you frustrated when you make the same to-do list day after day and feel like you are getting nowhere fast? State of Arizona research librarians, Corey Tuller and Brandy Helawa will share free strategies and tools that can lead to successful personal and project management. They will bring satisfaction instead of stress and achievement instead of anxiety. Bring your great ideas and experiences to share. Registration for this webinar is posted to the Arizona State Libraries events calendar, the AZLA calendar, advertised in the monthly professional development newsletter, and a link will be provided in your webinar follow-up email.
I would like to thank you all for attending today. Now I will pass presenter privileges to Pamela Rogers and Ann Bensfield for their presentation, Listening Connects, podcast for kids. Thanks, Lauren. It is great to be here. My name is Pamela Rogers. I'm a children's librarian, a member of the Professional Development Committee for AZLA, and I have been podcasting with and for kids for the past five years on a show I call Buttons and Fix, and I work with... I'm Ann Bensfield. I'm a freelance writer for School Library Journal. I write about emerging technologies. Um, I'm a speaker and a trainer. I'm also currently a member of ELSC's Children's and Technology Committee, and I'm a former technology librarian for kids and families. And the reason we have uh, come to be with you today, and thank you very much again for having us, is to share this journey that Anne and I have been on together. For the past five years, we have been following kids, the rise of kids podcasts. I've been doing it as a podcaster, but I've also been uh, kept my foot in the library world and doing it in partnership with others. Um, and over these years and after all of our conferences, we've spoken at ALA, we've spoken at uh, Illinois Library uh, Conference, we've spoken you know, at, at different sessions and we keep sharing this material and we continue to be excited by it what we're most excited to share with you today is really there is now some growing research and we'll show this is still a rising uh, world, kids podcasts. We hope whether you work directly with kids or in supportive families that you can find um, something within this uh, uh, presentation that we have for you today. And what has really surfaced for Anne and I over the past five years as this world has grown is the value of this listening. And that listening to kids podcasts actually promotes well-being, expands imaginations, strengthens relationships, inspires learning. Families who listen together, we've discovered, grow together, imagine together, connect together, and learn together. And while these words might just sound like, you know, something we kind of thrown to, we've, we've thrown together, uh, what we'll be sharing is the research. And we're just gonna give you a couple of quick examples of what we mean by this. For example, when we talk about that kids podcasts promote well being, if you haven't heard of the podcast Chompers, it is a podcast that helps kids brush their teeth. <laughs> that sounds crazy. I think that sounds crazy when you just say it like that. But it is a, a two minutes of audio that are put together with these fun little stories, jokes, or uh, little anecdotes, some information about the world. And included in that audio, it tells kids when to switch their brushing <laughs> from one side to another, thereby what you're doing then is listening. It, and, I, and I will just say my daughter will only brush her teeth for two minutes when listening to Chompers. Um, but you're, it promotes well-being. So it's a great example. Another example is that podcasts can expand imagination. And one of those is What If World. And in it, the host actually takes the ideas from the kids and that plants a seed for a story. So uh, one example of a question that they got, what if pigs make pickles? Or that was one of the episodes that was sparked from a kid's idea, which is so great because, you know, in children's librarianship, we always want to put kid voice at the center. And this does that in such a creative way. Let's see, another one, we have a couple examples, um, is one you might actually have heard of recently. Um, one, this one strengthens relationships. The podcast is Imagine Neighborhood. It was the winner of ELSC's Excellence in Learning Digital Media Award. And what's amazing about it is it talks a lot about social emotional learning. Um, and it uses uh, a specific curriculum, second step, 
But along with that, it really dives into race and equity, which is such a big topic right now for libraries across the board. Um, and it does it in a way that is very uh, relatable and easy to understand for kids. And a great example that just happened for Inspires Learning uh, there's a new podcast that came out uh, in 2020 called Reach, and is it is a science podcast for kids uh, focused on space. And they actually, I I think on the 13th they'll be releasing this episode. But they just did a live interview with the folks on the uh, the NASA astronauts on the space station, which is so super cool. It's already out on NASA TV. And the kids will be in, hear the interview that they, they did with them on the podcast feed uh, very soon. So those are just a few examples. We're gonna give you many more, but what we, why we're here today, our goal is really to inspire you, to empower kids and families to listen together. And we hope that we're gonna uh, be able to, to inspire you to do that maybe and either validate what you're already doing or provide you with some ideas for some new ways. So we'll be sharing the growth of KidCast. Survey results about KidsCast and the, and the current research that's available. Which is very exciting to see coming out. And we're gonna share a bunch of examples of librarians who have been empowering their families to listen. So over the past year with the pandemic, we've some, seen some really neat numbers of that show there's been a growth of kids podcasts. So as of 2019, we know that about 51% of Americans over 12 have listened to podcasts, which is, a, which is great. But then when we're looking at the kids numbers from last year, we saw um, that uh, weekly children's and family podcast listening increased by 24% in 2020. So families were looking for alternative ways to engage digitally. And one of the places that they were turning to was podcast listening and engagement. And so, so I'll just add one of the things we always hear too is that they, the parents focus on that screen free element. Yes, yes, the screen free way to engage um, is very important right now when there was so much screen use in the past year. Um, plus, so 25% of kids age six to 17 now listen to podcasts. That's kind of where we see it right now. Our hope is that it'll just keep continuing to grow. And the reason we keep talking to librarians is that the, the more that we're in this world, and I'm also, uh, because I'm also podcasting, I'm in that world as well. We hear so often that podcasters want to reach out with this, these, their great stories with this content. They want to reach librarians. And one of the things that's been so validating for me, because you know, I come out of the, the public library world, school libraries, and I'm shaped by story times and every child ready to read. And what I was just tickled to find is that once I entered into audio, that those lessons that I knew from children's librarianship, they translated straight on over. And this is one that I love seeing now in statistics, but as every children like children's librarian knows, kids who love a great book, and one of the tests of a great book is whether you can read it over and over and over again. Um, and, and whether the adult doesn't get, get, go crazy with that. Um, but kids' podcasts work the same. And what the, the research that's out there right now shows is 80% of kids listen to a podcast episode more than once. And I feel lucky that when I began, I knew my shows would be listened to more than once. Um, but this is new to podcasters and those who haven't been in our world. Pam, do you want to talk a little bit about Kids Listen? Um, and this is where we got our, our survey results for listening. Um, Pam's a member of Kids Listen. And Kids Listen, I joined Kids Listen about right within about four months of when I started. I had set a goal. I saw this brand new, uh, I'm self-taught. I learned to podcast from YouTube. 
my basement in Illinois, <laughs> which is where I met Dan. And I set a goal for myself. I said, if I can get four episodes out in the world, I want to join this group. And I was watching it because it had just emerged. And it is a grassroots nonprofit group of, of podcasters who podcast for kids. And they were forming because this world just wasn't, um, there wasn't a lot of people doing it. You, it really is, it was just a handful of folks who had been doing audio in the radio world and, and um, other audio worlds for kids. Um, and so I joined Kids Listen. And since that time, it has just grown leaps and bounds. There are um, oh, over 100 members, over 50 uh, children's uh, shows that are part of this group. And they continue to um, be advocating for high quality children's audio. And they have been working really closely with Ann and I because they want librarians at the table evaluating this content because they know those are the skills that we bring to the table. So Kids Listen was one at the forefront to do the first surveys that's focused on this on-demand podcast listening, which is a little different, right? In terms of how it operates than say audiobooks. There's some good research that's coming out of the audiobook world um, from sound listening and others, uh, but, but we're just seeing the research emerge from kids' podcasts. So we're gonna share just a few of those highlights with you. Uh, this first one is what do kids do while listening? This is one of the questions. And I have to say, I love this one because it also kind of validates what I've known and seen from children's books and stories is that 78% of kids, when they're listening to a podcast, they're just listening. They're not doing anything else. They stop. And, and that's what I've seen because I work with kids in terms of getting my content. They're not doing anything else. Whereas a lot of adults, right? We're multitasking or we're doing something else. Um, a fair number of them are playing are doing arts and crafts, or they're getting ready for bed. So they're doing other like daily routines and chores and so forth. And I just wanted to say that when I programmed a lot around podcasts, I saw that that was true with the just listening. So if it was an after school program, you know, sometimes they'd doodle or do other things while listening, but a lot of times it was just having a podcast club or area where they were grouped together, um, or uh, we had like stations in the library for listening stations with iPads set out, um, and people could just listen and then share what they were learning. Another thing was playing it during story time. So I would play it at the end and then pass out information about the podcast or a, ver a variety of podcasts for listeners advisory. And so there are a lot of ways where you can just spark podcast engagement through programming, which is so exciting. Um, also, if you wanted to share more, um, the cool thing is a lot of the podcasters have already done so much work for librarians. They created an activity podcast. So after you listen to the podcast, Kids Listen created uh, these different episodes that are from one podcaster, but they have an activity with them. Um, this was through they started it during the pandemic. So there's, there's a good amount of episodes on it. And then each podcaster also has really worked in curriculum. So a lot of them, if you go to their website, you can find activities there that you could use for all sorts of programming. So it's exciting that librarians don't really have to come up with completely new ideas. They have a base when it comes to podcasting. Uh, I also just want to say as an aside, we are really big into links. So on these slides, you can find, for example, the full survey on the bottom. But then if you go throughout the presentation, we have a lot of other resources. So this is just a starting point for you if you want to keep investigating. One of the next um, results we wanted to share is what do parents do while kids listening? Um, I'm also very excited by seeing these results because so much work has been done within ALSK and ALA 
when we talk about engaging families and families coming together uh, through libraries. And what the feedback is from these surveys is that adults are listening, the grownups are listening along with the kids. 63% say they are. Some say they're doing household chores. I would think that they're also probably listening as well, or they're just relaxing, they say, probably taking it in as well, um, or they might be working and focused on something else. But I'm very excited to see this because I think, again, it gives us the validation for really finding ways to be promoting this kind of content for kids and families. Another really exciting area of the survey that we found was about how do families find out about new podcasts. And why we think it's exciting is there isn't a lot of work that librarians need to do to uh, share podcasts. Because once um, you share one podcast, you can families can find way more podcasts. So, um, so that in the survey it said recommendation from another podcast that's 53%. So a lot of podcasts in the podcast will have a prom promo from another podcast. So they'll have someone come on from that podcast and talk a little bit about how they're engaging families and kids. Um, so uh, there are some other ways that you can also uh, engage too, and we will we'll share that a little bit later too. But we just wanted to say that from a listener's advisory or a big thing in uh, Elsk or ALA is just media mentorship. That you can you can start by just recommending one podcast that maybe you're listening to on your commute or at home um, during dinner or bedtime or different times. So we'll get into that a little more right now. Yeah, and, and also just to add that I think one of the biggest barriers is simply, you know, when we share that only 50%, you know, cross the adult 50% threshold into listening to podcasts just a couple of years ago, and now it's about a quarter of kids that have started to listen. So there's a lot more people to kind of discover this content, and that's the biggest barrier, right? Because it does take a little bit of setup. It does take a little bit of understanding of what apps do what and how to find shows and all of that, which is again, where we can come in um, to play. And that's where too, Pam, with being on the playground or um, you know, wherever you are in the community, a lot of times I'll just tell people, start at Kids Listen, the grassroots audio group, and you know, people will Google that and then they have a, a place to look for kids podcasts because there's quite the variety in there. We'll talk about some other resources too that can um, be great for go to uh, like listeners advisory too later, but that is a great way if you're just breaking in. So hopefully you're starting to sort of see, um, you know, and think about, okay, th these are the ways that I can program um, and perhaps open a door into kids podcasting for my community and my families. And this chart is very cool for that because it really highlights when families are listening. And um, it's probably no surprise, but with kids, they're listening in the morning and part of maybe a morning routine. You can see there's kind of a jump around that commuting time when there was commuting. We're hopefully back to commuting again a bit uh, to get kids into school. Um, there is like a noontime kind of uh, push in there, um, whether that's nap times, uh, you know, uh, listening during lunch or something. And then there's a big jump in the evenings. So you can see a, a jump on the evening commute times from school. Um, and this, you know, getting ready for dinner, we've heard a lot of people will just put on a podcast as, as uh, folks are preparing their evening meal. And then into bedtime, um, there's another sort of spike um, at that time. So this is kind of helpful to figure out uh, how to connect with families. And then, and, oh, yep. oh yeah, go ahead if you wanna set this up, this one up too. This is a great research study. Yeah, hopefully we're not uh, admiring you in research, but it really does guide us. <laughs> we're very excited to see just this past year, the National Science Foundation partnered with Brains On, one of the longest running kids podcasts in the country. Um, um, and Anne, go ahead. 
show us our first results. Well, the reason we wanted to talk about this is looking at it from just an equity lens of who's listening right now. Um, Brains, on, Brains On is always very ahead of the curve. And so they have this research and it's important to look at who's accessing podcasts and who also as librarians, we can help access podcasts. So um, Brains On said that their listenership, you know, tends to be highly educated. 64% um, have an adult with a graduate degree. They have an annual household income of 100,000, um, that's 60%. And then be a public radio listeners, um, that's 92% with at least one adult who listens to public radio. And then have an adult with a STEM-based job, that's 62%. So we just wanna make sure that podcasts are a very timely medium. There's a lot of benefits we talked to about at the beginning. And we just wanna make sure that people are, are getting access, uh, not just people in these groups. Um, and so we wanted to share with you just this study because of that. One thing that Brains On did was they put out a lot of timely information about the coronavirus, for example, about masks and vaccines and how to explain those to kids. And uh, we had, with the American Library Association, had a look to libraries campaign through ALSC, and they had put the coronavirus podcast like Frames On, and there's a couple other Tumble Media different ones that produced them. And they were very high quality. They got some great interviews from experts and kids. And um, just the fact that the podcast could turn those around and have them available when right when kids and families needed them. We think that it's really important that this medium also be in the mix with other mediums. And Tumble, during that time too, Tumble also translated those into Spanish. And so the coronavirus information also is in other languages, um, which in Arizona is uh, would be really valuable. That's a great point. Yeah. The Brains On study also found that um, people are listening. And as no surprise, it's kind of where adults and grownups are listening as well but most people are listening in their car. Uh, most people are listening at home as well. Um, when they're on trips or going on vacations, that's another good time to really connect is those times where families are doing that. Um, on airplanes, um, we're seeing air travel uh, pick up again. So this could be another um, increase there and on public transportation as they move around. And then we also learned after listening to Brains On, uh, kid age five to 12 have. So this, this is beyond just listening. They do a lot of great things. They um, talk to someone about what they heard on a show. That's 96% quoted saying or acted something from a show. That's 84%. Search for more information um, about an episode topic. That's 62% sent something to brains on 52%. These are all very strong numbers. And then did an activity or experiment inspired by an episode that was 44%. So we know that there's a lot of learning that's happening and co-engagement between uh, parents and ki kids or caregivers and kids. And so it's just exciting to see that podcasts are sparking a lot of learning. And I'm very proud because I just received an email from a mom who shared that from my show that her six-year-old was running around the house saying, if you think it's difficult being around me, try being me, which is a direct quote from my podcast. So there her child is having fun just reciting lines from podcasts. So it's uh, literacy building. Thanks for that example. <laughs> With all, of this, <laughs> with all of this research, um, so where do we come in, okay? So we're gonna focus now on the gaps. Where are the gaps? And you can kind of see them through the survey results, right? Like Anne shares like who's listening right now. Um, okay, you can really see the gaps there. So 
here are some of the, the notes that Ann and I have um, sort of been compiling. We have a longer list than this, but here's like kind of broken down into uh, really what we see where librarians can help fill some of these gaps. And EDI, um, equity, diversity, and inclusivity. Um, boy, does there need to be more diverse voices. We're gonna share with you some of the exciting diverse voices, um, some examples um, coming up here, but boy, does there need to be a lot more. Um, Anne, do you wanna add on EDI? Uh, it's your focus area. Yeah, I just wanna say that uh, it's great to really highlight and lift those people that are doing diverse work, especially if we're evaluating and reviewing podcasts as librarians. That's an area where we can make sure to keep the momentum since this is a newer um, medium that's on the rise. There's an opportunity to uh, make sure that we're elevating this type of medium. So do we, let's go to that slide you were talking about, Pam, um, with all the different examples. So let's see here. All right, so this yeah. is, yeah, this is just such a great resource because I haven't seen a lot out there yet about diverse voices. So this is a wonderful resource. Hopefully it'll hit somebody in, in terms of, of where you're at, but some super exciting shows on here. Um, and again, this will be uh, shared with you, but Activist U is uh, LGBTQ rights and kids who are getting involved in activism. Warrior Kids podcast is Native American voices and stories from kids. Um, Molly of Denali, which you probably know from the PBS show, has this podcast series that's focused on Native Americans as well. Um, Stoop Kids Stories are African-American um, characters and uh, stories uh, that are just right out of kids' lives and, and, and things that they're dealing with and feelings and emotions. Fantastic. That show actually just got picked up as a stage performance, which is super exciting. Um, do you want me to keep going on these, man? Okay. <laughs> so many. You guys, there's so many. I know. Yes. Mic, mic drop is like so crazy exciting. Um, Time Storm is like takes... Uh, uh, Puerto Rican stories and mixes history with this science fiction adventure series. Um, you can see we can go on. Girls Makes Beats is a great high school one. They're, these girls, there's nobody, there's, there's very few females doing audio. Um, and, and this group is formed, a nonprofit, to bring girls into audio producing. And they're making beats and they have a podcast, which is fantastic. Thanks, those are your... Those are great ones to highlight. Let's see, let's go back to the gaps. Let's see. So another area that has gaps is for young adult listening. And we know that because we've been curating summer reading lists in the past and we wanted to highlight kids and tweens and um, also teens, but a lot of the podcasts for teens have actually been adult podcasts that work for a teen audience. And so we would like to see more growth in this area. Um, I always think about like how tween librarianship evolved after, you know, like later, I feel like this is where for that audience is already establishing itself in the podcast realm. And now it's like, okay, well, we don't wanna skip young adults. They also need podcasts. Um, one area lately that we've been seeing more development with uh, the grade schoolers is from PRX, they have Gen Z. And then for like late grade school tween, they also have tracks. So there are different groupings of shows and networks that are starting, but we'd like to see more. And then we've been curating lists of all different subject areas for librarians through School Library Journal. And areas that we would like to see more podcasts would be, you know, anything with financial literacy, language, especially um, just uh, for like English as a second language learners more stories and more original youth voices. So just getting kids behind the mic as often as possible and sharing. Um, and then 
there has been a lot of interest in certain areas. Again, that's languages, anything STEAM with like libraries and the maker movement, and then audio drama series. We just wrote an article this summer about different audio drama series that are popping up. Um, it's exciting. Uh, Netflix is starting to get into the space of taking a podcast uh, to making it a TV show for kids. Um, for example, Mars Patel is one of those. So it's great to see um, where there is interest so that more can be developed. And then- I, I'll say, yeah. I just started watching the uh, uh, Steve Martin, Martin Short and uh, Selena Gomez series and it's based on a podcast. But I love seeing that because <laughs> Once you see this adult investment, it, it starts in the grown up world, right? And then it and then, you know, it comes into the kids world. So it's still exciting to see. Yes. And then one thing we'd love to see would be more librarians at the table talking about podcasting and what they're doing. Um, we uh, have been doing like a podcast group with other librarians through uh, just through the ELSE Technology Committee, we kind of started and we've been talking to other kid casters or podcasters and librarians to try and find ways for them to merge. But we just want this conversation to continue, but also for librarians as podcast listenership and podcast um, creation continue that librarians are part of that conversation. For sure. And now is our time to share with you what have librarians been doing around the country and in the hopes that um, this either inspires and again, maybe gives you some ideas for what uh, folks are doing. One of the main ways that librarians have been sharing podcasts is through website promotion. So the Glen Ellen Public Library is uh, has a we're just giving some links of examples here. Um, they just pop it right onto their website. I don't know if that's easy for us to, to switch. Oh yeah, over. I can, let me grab that here. Oh, you can kind of see there. Right yeah. So they give, you know, the, the <laughs> library is able to give a little bit of information around podcasts, um, other audio books, links to other than, you know, other listening um, happening at their library, and then a list of shows. So this is one of the most common ways that, that librarians are uh, connecting with podcasts. Um, another way that libraries are doing it is some, um, depends on your system, of course, is they're able to embed it. So this library um, has embedded it. They have a Biblio Commons area. And so they can, their, their librarians can create uh, and curate lists that then they embed within. So uh, their catalog essentially. And so when the folks are searching, they can also find these, uh, this content. And so here is a list of shows that links um, to either websites or kids listen and that sort of thing, which is neat to see. Um, listeners advisory, I see somebody in the chat had mentioned it. We need listeners advisory. Yes, we do. Go forth <laughs> and can do more listeners advisory. Um, folks really do want to be you know, welcomed into this world and, and, and shown that this content is relevant to their lives. Um, here is a great example of listeners advisory that Anne and I did. That happens to be my daughter sitting there podcasting with Anne at the <laughs> library. All very exciting. Um, Anne did a podcast 101. So that, as we mentioned, that's like the biggest barrier is getting families to discover this material and then sharing with them, how do you listen? How do you find these shows? Um, and again, it is still not easy. I'm just going to say that it is still not easy easy. It's getting better, still not easy. So Anne did this 101 for them to give them just a few ways again to, to enter, um, which are all still great ways. They're all still relevant ways on her list. And then it's a four part fold out. Um, and on the back, she then gave a few of the doorways to enter and categorize them as librarians will do um, into this world around you and world of books and so forth. And all these shows are still that she has on here are fantastic. Feel so, free to steal the brochure. Yes, <laughs> Make steal. it your own. Make it your own. So. Uh, it's a fantastic way. And when we'll have that for you. Um, and then review and evaluate. This is our expertise, right? This is our wheelhouse. Um, Anne and I, what we've been doing for SLJ, it's not evaluation. What we've really focused on is discovery and curating lists 
that have a thematic kind of crossover into the world of librarianship. Um, but we really need folks to enter this world in an evaluation. What we've heard from the leaders is Anne and I have really talked to some exciting folks around the country about podcasts. And if we want librarians at the table to begin evaluating this content. Um, I really think there's a pathway and people are trying to build it into awards for great podcast and audio uh, uh, shows. And I would love it if, if librarians were at the table doing that work. Um, and so uh, reach out to us if you're interested in doing that kind of thing. And then uh, programming with podcasters, a lot of podcasters will match up with their local libraries. So look and see which podcasters or kidcasters are around you. For example, Ear Snacks, we have a link to how they're partnering with libraries and out in Los Angeles and California area. They've worked with a couple different libraries. So you can check out their website. Another really shining example that we uh, have is about a podcast club. And let's see, I'm gonna switch over. Let's see here. So Melrose Public Library, we worked with Renee Kogan and she was inspired by a children's and libraries article, which Pam wrote <laughs> with another podcaster, Kitty Feldy, who does book club for kids and um, Fina Mendoza. She, Renee came up with a uh, way to engage during the podcast, I mean, during the pandemic, uh, she wanted to switch to podcasts for her book group, um, just because she wanted a way that would be easy for families to access listening, um, try something new to spark joy. Uh, she was doing eBooks, but that wasn't connecting as well. Um, and so she tried podcasts and that seemed to be really, like once families learned about it, they were on board and excited. The really, really, really cool thing is that she was able to get other podcasters to come virtually to her book club. So she did her book club uh, via Zoom and they met and she invited a local podcaster from At Your Level and then a global one, uh, Newsy Jaguzzi, um, who was in India and they came and spoke. So um, at your level as a kid pos podcaster from Massachusetts, and he talked about pandemic birthdays, Newsy Jacuzzi. They talked about what was happening in India with the coronavirus at that time. Um, another podcast she fe uh, featured was Smash Boom Best, which is kind of like a debate one. Um, you know, like uh, magical creatures like unicorns versus Bigfoot or different ones that they have. So she pick different podcasts and highlight it um, so that uh, there could be some deeper listening and learning happening in her community. And she keeps evolving that uh, as, as time has gone by. And I think one of the coolest things too is that um, she realized she just didn't have to do a lot of work because what she found is that kids just listen when playing a podcast. So they would just listen to this online together. Um, and, and her engagement. And so uh, I, I will say what I hear a lot of times from um, grownups is that they think kids have to have the visual. Well, this is, a, this is a podcast club for second and third graders and it worked. The kids showed up every week excited to listen, uh, share in the show, sometimes meet a guest. So she did just an amazing job with that. Another great example I will share is, is and uh, going back to that empower listening slide there, is from our own state. So the Maricopa County Library District actually took our list. So Anne and I curate, we'll show you the tool in just a second, curate lists, and they took it and embedded it within summer reading. This is one of the things I think the opportunity is just there to really highlight listening on the go in the summer um, and connect that with reading. Um, and and so they embedded it in the list. They featured um, those playlists as part of it. They, that's been done around the country as well, but, but the way they embedded it really got the attention of folks at PRX, the Public Radio Exchange, and um, we're excited to just see librarians really taking it and putting it into their programming, which leads us to PRX and TRX. Um, what 
is happening around podcasting. If you are a place that is putting in a new studio, say, or uh, wants to start a podcast of their own, please know that capturing and sharing oral stories is very exciting right now. Um, uh, PRX, Public Radio Exchange, has a, uh, an offshoot of them uh, called TRX that is focused solely on nine to 13 year olds. What they are creating is so exciting because they just keep putting more and more kids voices in their shows, focusing on kids telling stories, focusing on kids reactions to life, focusing on their cultural understanding and, and experiencing of the world around them. So be sure to check out all their shows, um, which leads us to the fact that IMLS just granted uh, University of Alabama, University of Texas, a $427,000 grant to do audio uh, capture local oral storytelling from families and to produce it for radio and we hope podcast. Ann and I have been talking to him about maybe making sure they, they do both radio and podcast together. And Ann, you wanna share that last one? Sure, the Star Library Network and Connected Learning, let's see. Uh, so the Star Library Network is a great resource if you're looking for a toolkit or a way to connect with STEM resources. And uh, that's a very uh, great tool for any type of campaign or thing you're trying to do. Um, also, Connected Learning is a place uh, with different progressive resources, and uh, they'll probably feature that IMLS grant down the road since they're partnering with uh, those researchers. And um, let's keep going. I do want to show the most straightforward way that librarians can connect to podcasts. <laughs> this one you'll just be able to get behind very easily. Let's see here. Oops, let's go to this slide with a great mix of shows. Um, this one is from podcast to book. So instead of book to podcast, we've got podcast to book. And so we put all the different books on here that are from podcasts. We even have a link to a bibliography. So if you want to purchase those for your library, it was just in a local bookstore in Michigan. Uh, and they had the Wow in the World book on the shelf. And I was just like so excited. Or when I go to any library and I see a podcast book, um, it's just great because I know how much work those podcasters put into the books um, to translate to uh, print. And just a shout out, uh, Kitty Feldy will actually be in town. So up top, the Fina Mendoza Mysteries. She is now out with her second middle school book um, that is uh, really grounded in democracy and civics lessons um, and uh, with a mystery wrapped around it. And so she just released her second one. She will be in Arizona the week of October 18th. If anybody um, would like an author visit, please reach out to me after this uh, session. So that is exciting. I also wanna point out Mary Farfisa's Outer Space Radio Theater for Arizona folks. They are an Arizona, uh, Jim Sheff is the creator and I can't say enough goodness about it. It's just mind blowing, amazing. Um, he's based up in Flagstaff, so Lauren's the lucky one there. Um, just fantastic stuff. We're missing uh, Noodle Loaf is on here. So this is not an all inclusive list. <laughs> it's just to give you an idea that a lot of podcasters are putting out books right now. Story Seeds, which is just right out of our, I mean, this is literary for, uh, Safari does this. Um, they're fantastic. They're hosting podcast camps for kids right now, and they put out an activity book that is super. So even if you, it's not a great book maybe to, to circulate because it is an activity book, but to even get it into your hands if you're programming for kids would give you fantastic ideas of how to connect with their podcast, as well as give you ideas to get kids writing, reading, and doing literary uh, activities. Uh, Past in the Curious, um, get that book on your shelf uh, like kids love it because it actually it's a true story about a meat shower in Kentucky um yeah you can see the rest they're just wonderful oh and story pirates if you're not familiar with them they started as a, a way to inspire kids to write and so these books break down the writing process for kids um and me versus the multiverse I can't stop see 
I can't stop yet. <laughs> Me versus the multiverse. <laughs> I just released a second book as uh, another book. There's several in that series uh, as well. And so it's really fun to connect kids with the audio and uh, to continue, you know, to extend that experience uh, with the books or coloring books. That's great. Okay. Yes. As you're leaving questions, here are the tools that you'll want to come back to and take a look at. So we put a variety of tools on here. The first one is a really good go-to place is just a podcast app. I mean, there's a lot in the app itself. Uh, the biggest name is Apple Podcasts still, but then also Spotify is well-known, Audible, Google. There's um way more than that um I use overcast so <laughs> yeah and then yeah, listen, what do you use? yeah yeah and listen notes for librarians is a search engine for podcasts it's free every list Ann and I have created you can right now take those lists from listen notes they're openly accessible you can embed them in your website you can share them with your community so you just have to link them up they're already there for you, but you can create your own. So if you're doing something in your community, you want to put a list of five podcast uh, episodes together, do it with listen notes because it's easy to share. Fantastic resource. Fellow Collective is a newsletter. Hot Pod is a newsletter. Apple Podcast Categories now, um, they just, Apple just in 2020 created a category just for kids as opposed to kids and families where they would mix the wine drinking moms with the kids podcasts. And so they've now found a way to separate those. Um, and we Spotify, mentioned some of the, yeah. <laughs> all the big names, the big name, Spotify playlists, school library journal networks like PRX, and then also um, blogs like kids listen. Um, and then we have a website to listen to and fro where we show everything we've curated. So. Um, actually, I did just hear that. Um, uh, Kitty actually just shared. Hot Pod <laughs> is going Kitty's over. Here. Yeah. Um, Hot Pod's actually been transferred to Vox Media. So Thanks. they are now getting in the world of what Hot Pod was doing, which is awesome. And then uh, I just updated updated the slide um, for that today. But I think uh, they're going dark for a couple of weeks uh, before they switch over to Vox as the Verge. So it, it's going to still exist. Um, I think it needs a subscription now, but it's it's still going to be out there and available for people. Yeah. So questions. I think it's time for questions, Anne. We're ready. <laughs> All right. Thank you both. Uh, first question, do you have any recommendations for using podcasts with high school and or college students? And do you want to take that one? I'm Well, yeah. I was going to say that there are a lot of websites now as far as curriculum for podcasters. I mean, we could get that person's contact information, but I've seen a lot of teachers come up with different ones that are very like specific to using in the classroom that you could use outside the classroom. Um, I feel, and then we do, we've done a couple different summer reading lists just for high schoolers based on different themes. So there are some, there's some great audio out there. I think you just need to look at some of the listeners advisory tools that we already have. So you don't have to search on your own for great listens. And I will say if you're a part of a, a district who's already really bought in and seen the value of listening with kids um, within the curriculum and they're ready, to, uh, district's ready to invest, then please look into Listen Wise. Um, the Monica, uh, uh, oh, I can't pronounce her last name, um, uh, comes from NPR World um, and has just created this amazing, um, it, it's a fee-based uh, fee service to school districts where they have selected audio snippets, created the curriculum for them and provide that all out. And they are just so responsive to with whatever's going on in the news um, in the world, and they are connecting with kids' podcasts as well. So you can find, you know, uh, a lesson plan that includes 
um, Kitty Feldy's book club for kids, for example, on their site. And so they're also starting, they, they have a lot of content. They started sort of in that high school world, but their content is slowly going down um, and they're, they're trickling down to the younger kids as well. So that's exciting. And now also, can I just say on NPR student podcast challenges for high schoolers and college students, if you're looking for another way to connect um, with great audio from high schoolers and college students. Oh, and I want to make sure I said listen wise, not listen notes. <laughs> it's listen wise. A lot of listening going on. Great. Thanks, both of you. And one additional question. So let's say you're feeling overwhelmed. What, what's step one for getting started with using podcasts at your library? Kids listen, I would say just Google it and then uh, start listening to different shows through their website. Um, and then you'll have an idea about that uh, and just start uh, looking at some of the links we have to different other libraries' websites and listener advisory tools, um, just so you can start getting in the game of recommending podcasts. And listen notes. Um it's just our, there are many ways to make playlists. So you can make podcast playlists. Once you start listening, you're like, oh, this is a great episode. I want to share this. You can do that through Spotify. You can do that through Radio Public. You can do that. So there are several tools out there. I will just say though, that listen notes, um, it will speak to librarians in the way that it's structured and the way that it searches. So you can filter for kids content when you go to search on there. So you can search by subject category or whatever kind of um, episodes you're looking for. And it really is a nifty tool. You can then make playlists and save them. You can also collaborate across your district with other librarians. So Anne and I, when we build a list, she's in Illinois, I'm here. We then save episodes to it. And we then embed those into our audio player and listen that way. So we're both listening. You can also stream from listen notes as well. I have one follow-up question. Um, does it cost to use Kids Listen? I see Anne, you just answered it in the chat, but do you wanna say it? So um, it doesn't cost if it you can go to their website and stream the different shows by finding them, or you can download their app through the app store that you use and then start listening that way. So that's the great thing about podcasts right now is that a lot of them are still free that you can easily access and share them. Um, if you want to become a member, there's a really nominal fee to join, but it's a great way to network with other podcasters. And you'll see through Anne and I, what we recommend, we are focused because we're focused on the, the diversity of voices and more people coming to this content that we're focused on freely access is something we really um, consider strongly when we put together a list. But for families that you discover just love this world and want a more um, protected world for their kids, I'll say, um, there are subscription services out there that are just fantastic. Um, whether it's Sparkle Stories, does a wonderful job, just has this huge catalog of original stories for kids right now with like wonderful lessons and um, other things that go with it. Um, uh, the, the big names are getting in the game of having subscription services. So uh, Apple Podcasts just released their subscription services. And so you will also find some content out there, um, Pina Auto, Audio and so forth. Well, thank you both. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Pam. And thank you to all for being with us today. And we have reached the end of our hour and you will be receiving an email with a link to the recording of this webinar. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much.